In order for The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time to be such a success, the developers needed to craft a game that was both challenging and kid-friendly. They do this by slowly ramping up the difficulty and complexity. The first area of any video game is always key as it lays the foundation for what's important, and the Kokiri Forest does this masterfully. The first challenge of Ocarina of Time is pretty straightforward. Find your way over to the Deku Tree. And in case you missed all that red text, the opening cutscene of Ocarina of Time even shows you where to go. But, then you encounter the first roadblock of Ocarina of Time from the Kokiri with the fastest speed around, Mido. And these sorts of pre-dungeon roadblocks are a core component of Ocarina of Time, like locating Rudo's letter or making Darunia dance his blues away. You need two items to reach the Deku Tree, the Kokiri Sword and the Deku Shield. The quest for each one of these items teaches several things. When it comes to the Kokiri Sword, the player first gets a taste on how Ocarina of Time hides its items and how to find its clues. Without prior knowledge, players shouldn't know where to go as there is nothing directly pointing you in the right direction. But by talking to a few key NPCs like Saria, players should figure it out, thus cementing in the player's mind that NPCs in Ocarina of Time hold key information which holds true for the entirety of the game. So now that you have the Kokiri Sword, we have to find 40 rupees in order to buy the Deku Shield. This is where Ocarina of Time teaches core fundamentals. By forcing the player to find 40 rupees, Ocarina of Time encourages exploration. Players will get a good lay of the land and how to navigate it. The player will have to explore the majority of the Kokiri forest cutting grass, breaking pots, and hopping across platforms before they have enough rupees. And one cool thing about Ocarina of Time is how open it can be. While nothing specifically points new players to the Lost Woods, players may accidentally stumble upon it. But the developers made it frustrating to traverse the first time, but for the players that either do pick up on the music or trial and error their way through it, they'll get a glimpse of what Ocarina of Time has in store later. By now, you have the necessary items to continue and step into the first dungeon. This is where the game gets more complex, and that's why the developers give you Navi. While a game like Mario 64 is relatively straightforward, there is almost no way a new player would just innately know that you can climb certain walls, or even how to open a door for that matter. While Navi certainly can get on your nerves on your 100th playthrough, she was a godsend at one time. At this time, players should have a decent idea how to use the sword, but there really hasn't been any reason to practice with the shield. So the developers expertly placed this Deku Scrub in the room before the slingshot, a required item. And the room with the slingshot may be the first place that new players get stuck in Ocarina of Time and have to think critically. Ocarina of Time is a game that requires different tools to overcome obstacles, so the game gets a very natural, smooth difficulty curve as players find more key items. Other games like Mario 64 gives you almost everything right at the start of the game. You don't need to unlock the long jump or the ground pound, but in Ocarina of Time, players learn that certain items trigger events. Now if new players weren't stumped there, this next part may drive them crazy. On the third floor, there isn't much. The compass room leads to a dead end, but not before teaching how important torches and Deku sticks are. But other than that, nothing. While Navi doesn't straight up tell you to jump, the Deku Scrub from earlier did mention something about falling from great heights, and the developers add some great visual clues. The little hearts encourage players to jump, and by standing on the edge, you see the spider web at the bottom. Visual clues will be key throughout the game, whether it's a circle of rocks or a cracked wall. When something looks odd, there's probably a reason. It might take a while to build up the courage, but eventually the player jumps down and learns that some walls, like spider webs, can be destroyed. The player is now at the bottom of the level, and Ocarina of Time has one final gauntlet within the Deku Tree. In these several rooms, the fundamentals are reinforced. Players need to engage in a little combat, solidify that the slingshot is a key item, and burn down more spider webs. You're now ready for Queen Goma, the first boss. While this creature might look intimidating to a 10 year old, this boss is very manageable. Again, you don't have many tools to work with. When simply attacking it with your sword doesn't cut it, players will begin experimenting with what they have. Whether it's the Deku Nuts or the Slingshot, they will soon defeat the first boss and graduate past the first level, only to face the real test of this game, not getting stuck in an endless loop with that owl.